ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles. Brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. That's it, my man. Welcome to another Motivational Monday episode. I'm back. <laughs> uh, Showtime, Sean Porter, of course. I have a very unique, fun, I'm going to tell y'all right now, soft, um, <laughs> very, very compassionate guy right next to me here. Uh, this is, what's your, uh, what's your, uh, your, your label in the, uh, in the army? I'm a major. This is, oh, so you're still major. This is Major still. Boyd Melson. Um, I've known Boyd since 2005. We'll go through it really quickly. We met during uh, boxing, of course, uh, a national championship tournament. Uh, you knew my brother the year before. Mm -hmm. uh, so you knew my dad for some time, of mm -hmm. course, traveling with me everywhere and my dad, my brother everywhere. And um, you and I have just since 2005 to now 2021 we've really the bond that we have is very unique to say the least uh i will repeat this man is soft you are going to hear and don't don't judge him okay? is that a i don't know how to take it's that. not it it, 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 <laughs> it is and it ain't like you are he's soft very very um soft-hearted uh again very compassionate um, I've seen this man get down in the boxing ring, so yes, he can fight, but we probably won't tell this story, but I saw this man get down in the streets one time, not with his fists, but speaking and oh, I know what you're talking about. not speaking to like some thugs on the street. My dude was talking to some officers of the law and both my eyebrows was raised like, wow. That was 07. That was like 07. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was 07, right? Yeah. In Colorado Springs. Yes. Major Boy Melson of the Army is with us today. Um, I'm a major in the United States Army Reserve, no longer active duty. There you go. When we were boxing at, for the Army, it was full time, and that was active know. duty then. Yeah. Yeah, but Sean, when I got deployed to the Middle East, I remember I was at a Fort Bragg, and this is 2018, mm -hmm. and Fort Bragg's in Fayetteville, middle of nowhere, and yeah. Sean said to me, I want to come and see you before you leave. And yeah. I said, oh, I love you, but I got to tell you, there's nothing going on in favor. You don't want to come here. Yeah. And you said to me, I need to see my brother before he leaves. Yeah. Yeah. And he flew, you flew, and he, like you're yeah, not here. Was, you flew yourself yeah. out on your own dollar. <laughs> yeah. Airport, yeah. hotel stay, yeah. car. Yeah. And stuff, saw me with the last friend I had. That was song a, before I went to the Middle East. Really big deal for you because my son was a boy about maybe three. A few days. Was he? He, he was, was like two weeks. Oh, you, he was you, only, he was just born. Few days. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You he flew out like the 29th born. and because. Yeah. Because LT signed off on it and yep, I couldn't believe yep, it. Yep, yep. And I remember yep. he, I said to you, him, the gift he gave me was him being born healthy. Yeah. So that he could allow you to be freed up to yeah. come see me. Yeah. And see me before I left. And then you spoke to troops out there. We set it yeah. on up. Yeah. And they got the yep. biggest gift. Yeah. And then when I was deployed, I got the gift of watching you beat Danny Garcia. Yeah. It was like September 25th of 2018. God, how do you know the exact day? I got special needs. Yeah. I remember certain days. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to remember. It It was, it wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't worried about you not coming back. That wasn't why I wanted to come see you. I think my regard for coming to see you was I wanted you to understand how much I cared about you. And anyone who knows Boyd Melson, if you spend any time with Boyd, he will make you feel extremely comfortable very quickly. He will make you feel extremely loved very quickly. He will make you feel extremely comfortable very quickly. And so as long as I've known Boyd, he's always been there, right? right not literally by my side, but supporting me in everything that I've done. And um, we, we do, we have a few announcements that we're gonna make through the course of this episode, um, I felt it would be good to have a Army veteran on the Motivational Monday. I feel like you have a lot to offer. You just got the wisdom that this kid has is, <laughs> you're not even a kid, but you know how we speak in boxing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. the, the wisdom you that mean. you have, I tell, what do I tell you every time I see you? Dude, I, well, I tell you a lot, but- to my, it's, 
you uh, you keep my mind going outside of the ring. You yeah. challenge my mind yep. all the time yep. outside of the ring. Every time we speak, I feel like I'm always just trying to grab whatever he's got. The way you speak is even is very unique as well, which I'm sure you guys will catch too as well. But um, let's let's go back really quickly. You are a West Point alumni. Mm-hmm. You were just telling me about how even at West Point, how you have to sit yeah, during at, the, at tables. During the first summer so, during cadet basic training. Yeah, you have to sit. You put the fist check because you said to me, make sure the fist check at your fist yeah, and face. That. Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, that reminds me. Like, I make love to my mic. So. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of times I'm like, oh, cool. Oh, my, yeah. <laughs> so you have to do the fist here and then the back and you have to stay at that space. And then your plate when you're eating your meals, the thumb check. And you put your thumb and it has to line up to the bottom, like the six o'clock of the plate. Yeah. And so that's the space. And if you try to start eating before there, yeah. that's your ass, Mr. Postman. <laughs> so this is this is basically a proper way of sitting. Yeah, all right. Now, uh, I always say that my dad's, I always describe my dad as very militant. And I got that from other people who described my dad as very militant. My dad didn't teach me how to sit like this, but my dad was very specific like that. Regimented, with I think, is a great word with your pops. My regimented. dad very regimented with everything, and I think that it it's practically gotten me where I am. Him being as regimented as he was throughout my childhood mm-hmm. to even in adulthood, you know what I mean. There's some things that that may go on, and and now I'm getting spoken to. Almost as if I am a child, but it's like I'm understanding exactly where the energy's coming from, exactly why he's saying it the way that he's saying it. What do you think West Point gave you, you know, in your your young age at, you know, what, 18 through? I was four 20? days out. Of, yeah, I was, well, almost, I turned eight, I was 17 when I graduated high school, and four days later, I started cadet basic training at yeah. West Point. And then in October, four days before your birthday, yeah, I turned yeah, 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 at 18. Yeah. So it was 17 and eight months through 21 and eight months. Yeah. I think the greatest gift that school gave me that experience was to teach me how to not be overwhelmed mm. and to understand how a moment will pass. Mm-hmm. As bad as it is, it just stay alive. <laughs> the moment passes. Um, the, I had the opportunity to go to West Point. I'm glad you came up, gave me the tour and all that. Amazing, amazing. Um, just the foundation and everything that's built there at West Point. But the number one thing that I learned going there is that uh, President Roosevelt felt it was necessary, necessary for all of the cadets to take boxing and make it a part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Why? When you're graduating, they tell you this all the time. We're training you. You're in college. You can be here on a D1. You can be a D1 athlete playing college football, any sport. But everyone here you're trained to be a second lieutenant when you graduate. Mm. And in a moment's notice, in a heartbeat, two planes can crash into a building, two buildings mm. in our country. Mm-hmm. And within months after you're graduating, you're in harm's way. Mm-hmm. So you're coming out of high school, mm. for most of us straight out of high school, and especially unless you played maybe football or, or basketball or lacrosse, you probably never got into a fight. Yeah. growing up yeah so that confidence of of understanding that as long as you keep trying you're still in the fight mm-hmm. i know it sounds cliche but there's a truth to it as yeah. long as no. you're alive and breathing you're still in the fight it's like yeah. the movie lone survivor you're yeah. always in the fight yeah so this class you take you go through it's 20 lessons long there's 16 lessons at least when i went through where they're teaching you the basics it's not meant to be some superstar but the basics the guard stance how to turn your hips the jab the cross you know the five punches one two three four five one, two, three, four, and under. And then you have four bouts at the end. And you have mm. two, two rounds, one minute each. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget, I remember after the first minute when I'm sitting in the corner I, and I, I can't breathe. I'm like dead. I'm 18 at this time and I'm dead. Boxing I, match. After one minute, and I thought to myself, pro boxing is a lie. There's no way you can go 12 rounds. This whole thing is fake. I don't <laughs> care what anyway. It's impossible. <laughs> They've been deceiving all of us. I'm thinking that in the corner while well, they're trying to give me a... <laughs> Like that, and I, it's impossible. It's impossible. Yeah, I didn't. I, there was no room for negotiation. Yeah, I've been lied to my whole life. Yeah, but it's a scam. Yeah, and <laughs> and then thinking I got to come back out for one more minute. Yeah, I'm gonna die. Uh huh. That part I'm gonna. So being a, getting the courage just to get off that stool for the next one, because he's probably thinking or she's probably thinking the same thing, but you don't know that, and you're thinking I'm dying. This person must be feeling great. 
And they're thinking, I'm dying, this person, but we've got to get through this class because we want to graduate because you got to pass this class to graduate and you pass the class, you can get your tail whooped each, each bout. But if you don't turn your head and look away when you get hit, as long as you fight back, they'll give you a D mm. because the purpose is to teach you to fight back because we can't practice getting shot. We can't practice being in the stress of a combat environment, but we can practice having heat put on us where we feel like death may keep going, may, yeah. may transpire yeah. if we don't slow ourselves down, if we, if we keep going forward yeah. or if we don't stop, death may happen, yeah. but it's not going to happen. Yeah. Go for it. It's right. not going to happen. Right. Under stress your limits. Right. And I remember when, when you interviewed me when we were at, on the Ring City card and I said, I think that everybody should test their self-concept. And that's what, what boxing... You said, what did boxing teach you? I said, it helped me learn, understand my own self-concept. Mm -hmm. Am I who I believe I am? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go back to self-concept because I love that. And then we'll probably have our first guest here. but Well, se second guest. But why did Teddy Roosevelt feel it necessary for, for cadets to take boxing? Well, at that time, think about it. It's World War one, uh, World War One, I think, and when it started. And war was much more hand-to-hand -hand combat. I mean, close, not hand-to-hand, -hand, but right, it, was, uh, it was up close. It wasn't striking you from kilometers and kilometers out from satellites. It was human to human. You could see, physically see the enemy. You need that confidence that you're going to survive if you keep trying. You're mm. not dead until you're dead. Mm. And it sucks to say it that way, but mm -hmm. hey, we're, we're at West Point. And when I'm there and we get hit, 9-11 happens in my junior year, it becomes real as, as day. Like, they've been telling us, you know, you could be deployed six months after graduation and be in charge of men in combat. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, it just all, happened to be that way for you. Yeah, I was, yeah. it was in my junior yeah. year. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, now I understand. Yeah. I didn't get, I was in the Army boxing program, the world-class uh -huh. athlete program, uh -huh. so I had a different route. I was deployed much later. Uh -huh. A lot of my classmates, and we lost some of them. Yeah. Some of them died. Yeah. And then real quickly, explain self-concept. That's a big thing for me. Are we who no. we believe we are? How do you find out? Mm. You, coach Abdulli used to always say to me, you could say that was an Olympic world-class athlete program coach and Olympic four-time Olympic coach. Oh, yeah. Coach Abdulli used to always say to me when I would say, I would never do this. And he would say, don't ever say the word never. Because it could be 99.99999 in the math, 9999. And then in the math class, yeah, you put a little bar over going. the nine, it goes. Yeah. But you never know unless you're doing it for certain. For certain, unless you're in the moment. And that's testing your self concept. Until you're going through something that's as similar to the actual space that it could be in real life. Like, so boxing compared to combat, maybe that's as close as we can get with actually being in combat. You don't know how you're gonna react. Yeah. And what you can hope is that you've gone through something as close as possible, but not actual that. Yeah. And you made that through, like yeah. you survived. Yeah. So that you have that to lean on yeah. for when you're in that actual moment of heat. Mm -hmm. So that's the importance of testing it. Am I, cause get, when I spoke at Johns Hopkins University to this women's basketball team once, I remember, I said, the worst place to be in the world is having everything on the line and having no life experience anywhere close mm -hmm. to the new challenge you're facing mm -hmm. and nothing to lean on. You're mm -hmm. gonna guess, am I this person? I have no idea right. and everything is on the line. Right. Everything. Right. Cherish your experiences, yeah, right? There you go, cherish them. Understand your experiences and learn from your experiences. Big ones. There you go. Learn from it. I love it. Short and so, nice and good. <laughs> yeah, I did. did I? Uh, you have now put out an album. It's on Spotify. Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon. It Apple. is a motivational album. Yep, and it's on the Pep Talk app, Motivation app. Okay. It's a. I, it's motivate. I call it more inspiration. And on the intro, I say that Excuse it's an inspirational me. track okay. more than no motivational. Okay. Be from for me when I get to hear the motivational apps. And I speak to this in the intro that it's more of somebody telling you how to find ways to believe in yourself so that you can achieve and get more from you. That's what motivation is. That's what you. I hear. Uh -huh. Maybe not to me uh -huh. per se, yeah. but when I hear, yeah. when I listen to E.T. Eric Thomas, who I love, or uh -huh. it's always like get the dog out or find more to believe in or something to get more out of you. Mm hmm and there's enough people doing that. And, and I know you can attest mm. to this. While you're doing all those things to achieve, there's other stuff in your life happening. Yeah. 
Yeah. Life is not just one person in their own world yeah. and it's I and we move. There's yeah. other stuff happening. Yeah. And what are you doing about that? And do I want to be 80 with every accolade I could have ever had, but I don't have a woman to take care of me when I'm breaking down or I'm mm-hmm. sleeping alone or I don't have children mm-hmm. who want to be around me mm-hmm. or have I not given people good feelings about, about me and themselves? Mm-hmm. So that's the album's called Raindrops. Mm-hmm. And raindrops represent hope, hope of lo- about the hope to look at things differently, mm-hmm. to change things that you want, to inspire curiosity. And I speak to Kobe Bryant with being mm-hmm. curious. Mm-hmm. And I speak mm-hmm. to children being curious, mm-hmm. wanting to know why and understand mm-hmm. why. And raindrops help create different storms and they have different purposes. So each track outside of the intro and the outro is a raindrop. And I attach certain messages to different life experiences I've had. And I and I show my, a lot of my pain. Mm-hmm. I evoke great emotion in my mm-hmm. track, I believe. Mm-hmm. And I make myself vulnerable mm-hmm. at times. You hear it come out of me. We're gonna play one. Thank you. So you are so soft. <laughs> <laughs> introduce, introduce our... Introduce our, our other guest real quick uh, because he is a part of the Raindrops album. Yes, he is. Yeah, go ahead. So we got my brother, Chom Bracy, the extraordinaire, the brilliant, the genius, the man who took my words. <laughs> and I've been telling him this. The man who took my words. Oof. Listen, you're retired now, so I'm not afraid. Yeah. The man who took, <laughs> who took my words and turn them with his craft into something that I believe is gonna last forever. And Sean had came, met me, uh, he approached me on, over LinkedIn springtime, and he told me what he does. He's in uh, motivation for the motivator. And mm. he said he puts music to words. And uh, I got to see he had speaking competitions nationally that he helped champion. And he's on ABC and NBC when they're covering his stuff. Yeah. And I told him I was interested, but I wasn't ready to move just yet. Yeah. And I remember I'd reached out to you and let you let you know about this. Yeah. And then is I didn't realize I never got back to him. And I was going through some texts for whatever reason. I was searching something else and it, it pinged him up. And I was like, man, I forgot to get back to him. And I hit him up and I was like, listen, I'm ready. And I'm ready to invest in what I believe. And, and I believe that if... The metric that measures your effectiveness as a speaker is your ability to connect with another human being, like vibrate same mm-hmm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. Then I believe I will go head to head with President Obama right mm-hmm. next to me. I know how to evoke my emotion. Mm-hmm. And I believe I know how to evoke others through that emotion yeah. and raise their vibration at that time. And so he said, let's move forward. Yeah. And we're, we're going to play one. And um, Sean, thanks for, thanks for uh, joining the Port Away podcast. Welcome. Hey, what's up, Sean? Uh, my name's Sean as well. Pleasure to yeah. be here. It's, yeah. uh, it's awesome, and I love what you're doing. Boy, Boy that's told me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he he told me some time ago what you had going on. I said I love it. Sounds great. Uh, I actually, I'm 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 getting to that point now where I'm ready to move on it. Um, I did not get any samples of anything that you've done, but I understand what you do. I want you to tell everybody, and then we're actually going to play one of Boyd's tracks. But hearing Boyd's tracks, Boyd does something very special and unique to him, especially the fact that he's practically freestyled just about just about every track. All of it, every track. And then you add what you, what you feel the necessary instrumental is ne- that ne- needed to take it to another level, where, where does that come from from you? Absolutely, you know, it comes from a process of just, you know, creating content, creating content, going all the way back in my days in broadcasting school. I originally wanted to be a, a musician, a rapper. So mm-hmm. I started at the school because I was, I figured, hey, if I started the broadcasting school, I'm gonna learn the ins and outs and figure out how to get on the radio. But in doing so, I learned more about the pre-production, post-production behind the scenes. And I was like, wow, I just fell in love with creating something from scratch every time. You know, you start with a blank canvas, you start with an idea and just being able to see an idea come to fruition. Every time it just gives me energy and being a part of something inspirational, something that could help people, you know, uh, shoot. I mean, I, I could do that all day. So now I do it all day. Are, are the instrumentals yours? 
You you yes, you create yes. them from scratch. Absolutely, we create the um, we got a team. We create them from scratch. We also add sound effects in there. You know, at certain points, you know, uh, right when right when we feel like some of the messaging is like the message of you know it's, it's our remix process. I don't want to get too much into it, but yeah, we have a remix. It's just sauce. That's what he calls you're it. Good. Put some no, of the sauce on it. You're good because you know that's what we're here for. We want. I want to. I wanted to expose what you do. I wanted people to pick up on uh, or the, the understand that that's out there and that, um, you know, you can find more inspirational and motivational audio out there on on the platforms than you ever realize. And uh, the fact that I'm I'm that connected to some one of those individuals who makes that I was like, yeah, I got to get this guy on here and I got to expose what he does. Uh, this is Motivational Monday, uh, this episode. And very near and dear to my heart, I, I, I'll give you the quick backstory. We we decided, hey, what are we going to do with this podcast, Port Away Podcast? Initially, I was like, I don't want it to be just boxing. I wanted, I want everybody to know that they can come here and get anything that they need. And essentially, we were going to do one episode. We were going to do two episodes a month. I went for a run, and after the run, I was something said, you got to do an episode every week. And I told my guys for the for the for the show, we, we're doing one episode a week. So strap in and get ready. If you got a problem with that, just let me know. Everybody's been good with it. So we've been pushing out one episode a month or excuse me, one episode a week. Uh, now I think we're on episode like 61 or 62. And my whole thing is the port away. So the port away is you don't stay complacent. You don't stay in one and at one place when you find success. You find either a way to create more success off of that or you go another route and you just get you get you find some, another way to become successful. So uh, with the podcast going the way that it was going, I say, you know what? I think now's the time for me to start Motivational Monday. That is basically who I am. Boy, you know me. I'm a helper. And I've learned something that I didn't know, but I can use my voice to help. And I didn't know that for a very long time. And I started using my voice to help. And then it became Motivational Monday. And the fact that you are putting audio and 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 um, instrumentals to to audio, to 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 uh, different um, men and women's uh, messages so that people can can grasp them to me. I said, I got to have this guy on my show. And that's why I have you here, man. I, I just want to say thank you for uh extending what you do and what you can do in a positive way. I don't want to knock anybody, but there's a lot of people who don't know how to extend what they do very well in a positive way. They use it, either use it for self gain or they just don't know how to use it and it goes to the wayside. You know what I mean? So you went to school wanting to learn one thing and it, and it transformed to something completely different. And I, I, I admire that. Absolutely, man. Hey, thanks so much. I mean, I agree, you know, that's why you know, I do what I do and continue to take it to the next level and take the next step with it. I feel like speakers and people with any kind of platform it, it can create a real social impact with all of their content, you know, because people are engaging with it. Every view matters. You never know what somebody's going through when they're listening or watching some of your stuff and how and what direction that could steer them in. So, yeah. I mean, content has power. And I mean, it's, it's just, I'm blessed. I feel like I have the best job in the world to be able to, you know, touch people and to help, you know, help, you know, help my clients touch people as well. Hey, let me ask you this. Do you think it's what you're doing now is better than the rapping that you could be doing or could have, could have done? I still think I'm the best rapper in the world. Uh oh, you know, I ain't mad um, at you. <laughs> you know, I mean, like I, 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 in, in, in the house, you know, I'm always freestyling, like in between, you know, doing stuff. But um, like, as far as like, you know, to the, you know, the full scope of to the world, you know, I feel like, what I'm doing and putting out there is a lot better than the music I would be creating because it would probably sound a lot like what's already out there. You, you, you're more than welcome to uh, to decline, but can I put you on the spot and get you to freestyle? Ooh. It's it's whatever. All right, all right, go. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> Just go. Just go. <laughs> Just go. I'm go. I'm gonna go. I'm here. I'm here on the Sean Porter show. We got we got boy. We got boy, you know, his album on steroids. We going up. See, look, I I ain't about to go again too again too get into it too much, you know. And and bless my, you know, I don't 
Maybe I'm not the best rapper in the world. <laughs> maybe, maybe I don't have any skills. I thought I did, but I don't. You know, All right, here, let me revert it real quick before <laughs> before before everybody uh, abandon you and, and they off your team and tell me to get you off the podcast. How many tracks do you think you've done now, like in terms of the motivational and the inspirational uh, albums? Oh, man, tons and tons and tons of tracks, you know, uh, especially through the Pep Talk app with... with um, Pep Talk's biggest motivation app in the world. And I, I provide them weekly content, you know, started off providing them weekly content. They ended up signing me to, you know, a deal to where I would pretty much provide them, you know, different audios. And from there, I get to collaborate with a lot of speakers just through the Pep Talk. You know, I have I have my clients as well that I work with. I've been able to help um, clients. Our biggest album has did over a million views on it. And we've helped our clients get on, you know, voiceover deals. And you know, being commercials and you know, just being cool, be, just be, you know. He's got a studio in Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. I, I went on down to people. Why'd come. you reach out to Boy? I felt like Boy, you know, had a his his, his message kind of you know stood out to me. He had a solid background. I could tell his background through his LinkedIn page, and you know, I, I feel like I want to get this out there to the masses a little more and work with more athletes because I feel like athletes have have a big platform. Mm-hmm. And they're already tapped into the people that consume a lot of this motivational content. You know, uh, these people like there's playlists, there's tons, gym motivation, study motivation, you know, just uh, all kinds of different playlists that, you know, people are just going to every day. It's Motivation Monday right now. And um, on Spotify alone and uh, Motiversity, this content is averaging over 300,000 monthly listeners. You know, that's mm-hmm. just through a couple apps. And true. I don't know. That if easy. Yeah, that easy. It's just that so, easy. so much people that, you know, need this stuff and that can be impacted. We're going to uh, in- introduce your, your uh, track real quick and we're, we're going to play audio right now, um, something that you and Boy put together. Go ahead. For, guess which one I'm going to have him play. Say it out loud? <laughs> yeah, say it out loud. <laughs> Cause that's the one. so say it out loud. Oh, oh, he's oh, he does. No, he was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you thought <laughs> <laughs> it's called say it out. Oh yeah, loud. say it out loud. What you mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I don't know. Say it out. Yes, yeah, say it out loud, Derek. <laughs> yeah. Come on, we kids. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, hey, all right. We well, go ahead. Go ahead. Album's called Say It Out Loud, and. I'm really excited for you to hear the backdrop to this. And I, what I envision with this album is it's like one of the ones at the Motor University track where if you ever watch, you hear, you hear Will Smith or you may hear Denzel with their voice narrative and those sort of different clips from their movies that apply to it, kind of like we made for your, for your video, mm-hmm. different that apply the words coming out speaking there. And State Out Loud is the mental health space. And mm-hmm. the reason I thought about this one, I remember I was going for a run, Kanye West song, Say it Come to Life. And I love that song, and I had it on repeat over and over and over again. I don't know what, if I just... No, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. So yeah, I love that yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. And so what I do for my tracks is I have a story, I try to connect, make it personal, and then I put a raindrop, like the message, the takeaway, to help maybe make you curious about something. Yeah. And mm. I was finishing the run, and as I was walking, I was like, what story? Because I always, I always tell people, you got to say what's inside say what you're thinking so you can hear it. Yeah. And a lot of people say, don't say nasty things about yourself because you're giving it an energy. And I say, say the things, hear them and evaluate them, breathe them out, mm. make them in existence that you look at. Mm-hmm. You don't have a therapist, hear it yourself, mm-hmm. say it. Mm-hmm. And I was walking, I know you'll appreciate this. So I'm walking, finished the run, I was hard run, uh, run around like seven, seven 40 minute miles of, uh, at uh, for four miles. And as I'm walking, my quads are getting tired. Mm. My quads are tired. And I just heard come to life over and over. And I started thinking about lactic acid and the buildup. And I was like, well, lactic, lactic acid happens because lactic acid happens. No, because, you're good. Oh. You just started speaking it out loud, though. Yeah, I started lactic. saying that yeah, out loud. Yeah. I was like, lactic, yeah, acid, lactic acid happens because there's a buildup of this, this chemical inside my muscles. And if I don't get it out, my muscle's going to fail. Yeah. And I was like, my muscle's going to fail. Well, if I don't get my thoughts out of my brain, my Ooh. brain is going to fail. Ooh. And then I started thinking what come to life, sadness creeping in again, 
one, two, three, your pen, like write it down, it comes in, get it yeah. out, get yeah. the paint out, get the paint out. Yeah. And then I love X, I don't know why it turned into this, but I've heard before often that the Bible is also a story about the human mind mm -hmm. and an example how to get through. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about with exorcist movies, how it just hit me all at once. And I called up Sean, right? And it was like, dude, you gotta hear this. Listen, so like my legs, the lactic acid and exorcist movies and the priest, when he's demanding that, that demon to say, to say, uh, the, that's possessing the human, say your name, what's your name, what's your name? And the demon is struggling to keep it in. And the moment it says it, the, it starts to lose power over the human. The moment it starts to say its name out loud, it starts releasing the human. The human starts getting its life back. And then it becomes, a, it's a weakened form. And I was like, that's like getting the lactic acid out of your brain so that muscle between your ears doesn't fail. Mm. And I was like, I think I got the story. I got the track mm -hmm. right there. Just hit me at once from Kanye, come to life. Cause I understand pain and sadness creeping in. I know what loneliness is. Yeah. I know these things. Yeah. And I just put, put all together at once. And I said, that, that's it. And I told Sean and he's, he believes in me. And the big word he go phrase he gave me is prosperity, pain into prosperity. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at smile. Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll put the citation marks on that. This is Say It Out Loud. Pay attention. Whenever I watch exorcist movies, there comes this time when the priest starts demanding the demon that's possessing the human to say its own name. And the demon, for the best of itself, for the best it can, tries to to hold its own name back. And that priest demands it. Say your name. What is your Say name? It Say it. Say it. Say it out loud. Whatever you're thinking, whatever is hurting, whatever's going on inside, the internal compromises you have to fit some type of narrative about yourself, that sounds horrible about you because you're feeling bad for yourself you're feeling guilty you're hurting you don't feel worthy you don't feel wanted so you start repeating those things to yourself in your own mind you start saying things to yourself that you don't have to hear out loud they just exist you change your sentences you change the words around in your head to fit some type of nasty negative life that that's not why you were created Say it out loud. Say what you're thinking out loud and tell me how it sounds. Tell me if you're that person. You think you're a horrible person? Say out loud, I'm a horrible person so you can hear yourself say it. Tell me if that's still you once you say it. Say it. Say it out loud. Make it come to life because when you say it out loud, you give it an existence outside of yourself. You give it an existence you to look at and think, is this really who I am? Is this the person that I am? When you keep it in here, you're gonna make it sound like the person you want it to be. And if you're feeling bad for yourself, you're gonna make it sound like someone that feels bad for themselves. But that doesn't mean that's you. But if you don't say it out loud and exercise the demon out, get the thoughts out, get the trauma out. Speaking of trauma, you know how much trauma we all have? We are born into trauma. What do I mean by that? Picture this. Here's this little light that's grown, that's surrounded by everything warm. You're safe because you're in your mama's stomach. You're being fed. You don't hear anything except your mother's voice that you recognize. You don't have any worries. And then one day, one day, against your will, you are shot out of a human's body into a world where you're crying, you're screaming, you're cold, you're hungry, you don't know where you're at, you just want to be held, you're confused, you're disoriented, you're born into trauma, born into it, so we need this from the moment we're born loved. And one of the best things you can do for yourself is say out loud your thoughts so you don't get trapped in a prison you created. Motivation for the motivated, motivation for the motivated. Kanye West and your song, Come to Life. You inspired this raindrop, brother. I love mm. that song. I love it so much that I went for a hard run the other day and kept it on repeat the entire time, listening to all those words over and over again. That song's filled with so much pain. 
And yet, it's filled with so much hope. Hope. That's what raindrops are made of. I love that, man. I love that. Genius, you put that. Yeah. Sean, tell everybody where they can find you, where they can follow you, and where they can get in touch with you if they want to do anything like what Boy, what you did with Boy, this album Raindrops. Absolutely. You know, to find me and you know what we're doing, start with the website, motivatormusic.com. That's gonna be the hub, you know, for everything we do. Like to consider us the premier multimedia company in the speaking mm. business, providing not only albums, but demo reels as well for speakers. Because a lot of times what speakers are doing is all the same thing as far as when it comes to marketing their sales. So uh, what we're looking to do is replace the book within the speaking business for the album. You know, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. album is a centerpiece in the music business and it creates touring opportunities and also it creates opportunities for brand building. And you're getting these residuals as well. So um, speakers are struggling to really stand out from the pack. So we checking off, checking off all of the boxes with the album, you know, standing out to the event planners. You know, you're getting residuals, you're engaging beyond the stage, keeping, you know, keeping your brand fresh on the minds of the people in the stage. So um, check out the site. You know, we post articles and things like that. Cool stuff. And we're so much more in store. So much more in store. Perfect, man. Listen, I'm out to uh, change the world, inspire the world, motivate, motivate the world, help the world. And I know it's a lot of other people out there that's that's willing and, and capable of doing that. And I, I I like to uh, thank you for being another one of those gentlemen that I, I run in contact that that does that man. Have a good one, all right. Don't let him go right. yet. He's oh no, don't let him go yet. To our to round to our teaser. He's gonna do the music to our teaser. Oh no no no, we'll let him go. We'll let him go. Oh. We're gonna let you go. Boy didn't know, but we're gonna let you go, big dog. We appreciate your time, man. All right, love you, brother. Thank you, man. All right, thank you. Y'all have a good one. That's Chon. That's name. What's Bracy. Bracy. B r a c e y. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> are your track? All your tracks are like right around three minutes, right? For the most part. Um, there's that wash your dishes is five minutes. Okay. Then the rest are around like three ten to three thirty, and then you got the long one, the ten minute one. Now you listen to all with me. Well, y'all need to understand about what the album, because I know you personally. I was, I kept looking at you like, did you write any of that down? No, no I didn't write any. I kept that. saying like, you've you've never been train to do that that one right there is just one example but they all they're they're not only poetic but they're very um it's almost like you're ministering through the album you're 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 preaching and you've not been trained to preach or minister right i have not so when i said this man is special and unique and different that's what i meant like you just have a way of delivering who you are whether that's on an album whether that's on a video Anybody that comes into contact with this man in the future, he's going to deliver. It's just who he is. And raindrops, like, it's just... Well, my boxing nickname was the Rainmaker. Yeah, Rain I was going to go back to that. Yeah, yeah, Rainmaker cools things down, treats everyone the same, everyone equal. When there's famine, there's drought, there's heat. Who'd you fight in the amateurs? Uh, big, I fought Danny Jacobs. Keep going, keep going. I fought Danny Jacobs. I fought Erislandi Lara. Fought DeAndre Lattimore. These are the names that, as pros, fought Keith Thurman, fought Demetrius Andre. Those were the, the names of the world champs as pros. Nice. And um, then you decided to turn pro yourself. Uh, that was two years after I was completely done. I was, an, I, I was selected as an alternate with, uh, like you for the oh, team. Yeah, yeah. And then I, tore, I was in India at the World Military Games and I retore my labrum. Mm hmm Cause I had both shoulders operated on after I fought Boo Boo, yeah, in 06. and then I retoured again in India, and I gave up my alternate slot. That's why I didn't go to Beijing with you and, uh, you and uh, the rest of the team, uh -huh. or train with you guys. Uh -huh. And then, so once I had a, a young lady, I promised I had a very special relationship with a young lady who I promised I would. She was paralyzed. I never give up on helping her walk. Yeah, again. yeah, no yeah I'm good. I'm we'll good. edit good. that out. And then <laughs> uh, I promised never give up on helping her walk again, and. It's quadriplegic and part of that promise involved me making the choice to, to raise awareness and funding for a specific clinical trial for spinal cord injuries overall. But we had a clinical trial we were trying to champion that mm -hmm. we're still trying to get F, raise the funding for. Mm -hmm. 
and I donated every purse in the ring. So I worked mm -hmm. full time for corporate America, my whole boxing career. You worked. I worked. I had a real job. This like dude I just don't work. Real job at that time. I did. I was all grown up. <laughs> it really was. Like I got on the train, went in, had a briefcase, yeah. Yeah. did the whole thing, yeah. played it all. Yeah. And uh, I worked for Johnson and Johnson in corporate America. I was a medical device sales. I was in the hospitals for like spinal implants and. And like Johnson suture, and the sutures in your I eyes, those are permanent. Those are, <laughs> <Johnson and Johnson. laughs> those are permanent sutures you got. I know what sutures those are. Oh, shut got, up! Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what was your uh, your professional boxing record? Uh, Fifteen two and one. So I'm proud. I earned I earned a, a regional title, the WBC USNBC. So that's the US title for it. I think that got you in the in rank number twenty. I think by doing Top 20. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I did all that while working full time, while mm -hmm. being a reserve, an officer in the Army Reserve full time, mm -hmm. by speaking all the time, mm -hmm. managing a whole bunch. So boxing was about third or fourth down the list, and I yeah. still and cutting that weight while doing <laughs> that. Yeah, you still manage fifteen two and one two and one. So I was yeah. really proud of being able to do that. Never committing. I when I boxed for the army full time on active duty as an amateur, that was the last and only time I that was all I did. Yeah. I was able to manage to do that as a pro and we raised four hundred thousand dollars wow. for that. Um it's cool the story got on the Breakfast Club with Charlemagne and HBO yeah. Real Sports yeah. and Sports Illustrated yeah. and WBC named me pointed me as their ambassador of peace mm -hmm. and ambassador of the military. Mm -hmm. And it I it started springing me to different circles of suffering. Uh that I welcomed because I felt I learned it was part of my purpose and it was in alignment so I wouldn't say no so helping uh -huh. with the mental health space uh -huh. children without daddies I was a mentor at the Steve Harvey Youth Mentorship uh -huh. Camp yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 in a social socioeconomically disadvantaged population uh, physically differently abled population and a drug addicted population mm. and all these it just kept piggybacking and I used social media as a platform to spread this brand so that I would, I would constantly show myself receiving certain, rec receiving certain recognitions to try to promote a space where you can trust me if I reach out to you and ask you to help with something I'm doing. And it started gaining celebrity uh, attraction. And that way, you know, people, they also think it's pretty cool if they're part of something that celebrities are going to be and they get to help and it's a good cause. Yeah. So I used it to empower my message with attractiveness. And so many times I would put something out there. I'd reach out to individuals and I'd hear them say, oh, well, if you're doing it, I know it's legit. I'll help you, Boyd. And they would see these things that I was doing. And then I started turning to, I'd have people I never knew just messaging me on Facebook with, yeah. I want. I see what you're doing. I have something of my own I want to do. Are you able to help? And as my network would expand, I'd say, sure. And I connect them with this person or that person. Or sometimes they just come and have a catharsis and just open up about their pain that they've gone through. And they felt safe coming to me about yeah, it. And yeah. I make myself naked all yeah. the time on there yeah. and vulnerable. And I'm an, yeah. dude, I am an easy crier. Yeah. So is Mike Tyson. Yeah. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. my audience is tough. They looking at you like, well, what celebrities he know? I ain't never seen him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the dude that's always in the cut. Your with, uh, with the guys. Your boxing name, the Rainmaker. Mm -hmm. Explain that real, real quick. There's a movie called The Power of One, uh -huh. and that takes place in South Africa pre-apartheid during World War II. Mm -hmm. And Morgan Freeman is is one of the stars, and this young boy named PK, and he's white, and he ends up having to go the his his grandfather is German and his grandfather his parents his mother dies his mother had black nannies raising him so he mm -hmm. learned how to speak Zulu and mm -hmm. Igbo mm -hmm. and he was breastfed by a black woman mm -hmm. and his parents were very accepting but his mother died then he goes to his grandfather his grandfather doesn't know how to raise him so he put sets him up with his uh, close friend who's a, a professor who ends up getting locked up in prison because he's English and the German lock him up or he's German and the English lock him up I don't recall and he's in an all black prison except for him. So he's treated differently than all the, all the other inmates. And they're just in there for being black. That's mm -hmm. all they're in there for. Mm -hmm. And young PK is white and he gets beat up in this boy. He's getting beat up and harassed by these neo-Nazi youth, Hitler youth type kids in this boarding school he was going to. So the grandfather introduces him to Morgan Freeman, who's the, who's the inter prison boxing coach, okay. who's also an inmate himself yeah. and starts training him at a really young age. 
And then when they show him at different, three different points, and it's like the actor that plays him as an as a late, uh, older teen is the actor Stephen Dwarf. And have you ever seen Blade One? Mm-hmm. So the villain, the head vampire. I know who that is. Yeah, he's Stephen yeah, Dwarf. So he's him Stephen when he's Dwarf. younger. Yeah. And when he's in middle age, he whenever he's with, sitting with Morgan Freeman and the the tribes would walk by him, the prison inmates, they'd always start singing some song, and humming a chant. And he would say, what, what do they keep calling me, this Ye-Zulu? Why, why do they keep saying that? And Morgan Freeman says, oh, that's the, the myth of the Rainmaker. And he said, why do they say that? And he said, well, the myth of the Rainmaker is that we know when, there's, when it, things are hard, when there's famine, when there's drought, and there's no hope, we call on the Rainmaker. And, you know, you treat everyone equal. You treat everyone the same. The tribes, when they're around you, they don't argue. They don't fight. You bring hope. The Rainmaker brings hope. And so when I needed to thought of a moniker that represents what I'm trying to do at that time, focusing on spinal cord injuries, I thought this may be it. And that movie touches me mm-hmm. all the time. And so for people listening, you know, I'm mixed. I got a, um, I'm Jew- Jewish from my mother's side and, and my grandparents are Holocaust survivors from there. And then my father's side were Louisiana Creole. So I come from rape and slavery, creating the genesis on one side yeah. and then attempted gen- genocide creating yeah. the other. Yeah. So I always say like I have compassionate DNA mm-hmm. I was made with. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of, it's helped me maneuver and navigate inside, yeah. which you tease me on often. I know I don't. Whatever. Do it. I'm that dude that all light skin brothers like to have around because all of a sudden the heat's off of them and I get all the jokes. <laughs> they all tease me. Hey, boy, it's here. Come here, boy. I like having you around because nobody knows what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> The audience, the entire time, they've been looking at, they go to eyes, then they hear the voice, and they look at the noise, and then they hear the, the <laughs> nose, and they hear the voice, and they look at the teeth, and then they hear the voice. Uh-huh. They're like, he's, he's off white. He's not white, <laughs> but he's white. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> when you meet my daddy, so that changes everything. I thought we'd clear that up at the very end, under letting everybody know exactly what's going on here, because everybody's been confused the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Your mom's Jewish. I love your mom. Beautiful uh, lady. Thank and then you. your dad, of course. I love Top. Top is Creole. Uh, a little bit more yellow than you. Yeah, he's dirty red. That's yeah, yeah, dirty red. So you were deployed. We talked a little bit about that while you were deployed. Um, I don't really want to go into the experiences you had about uh, during your deployment. Um, wasn't too bad, though, right? Wasn't too bad. Thank God. It was lonely. Absolutely. That was the worst experience. But in your loneliness, you you were able to do something, right? Sure did. I was contacted. I met a man named Andre Berry II, and he had written a script for a movie called Round One. It's mm-hmm. about a boxer. Powers that be had us connect. I read it. I asked him if I could help put some of my ideas into it, and I helped him rewrite the whole script, and he gave the such a good template, because I remember I told him, I said, I don't know how to write a script, but I know how to tell a story. Yeah. He wrote. He wrote. Yeah. He told. I. He wrote the script, and I helped little parts of it into the story. And I remember when I was I was in Iraq, a soldier out there committed suicide, yeah. and that really hit home hard because I'm thinking we're out here, and our concerns are the person the left and right of us making keeping them safe from ISIS and other people out here trying to hurt them. And I remember thinking I got to keep them safe from themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so, <laughs> killing suicide while we're out there. Yeah, yeah. And so when I decided we're gonna uh, dedicate this movie to mental health. Yeah. And O's father is a two-star general in Nevada. Mm-hmm. He's the he's the senior general for the Air National Guard. Yeah. And O's a firefighter. He's a first responder. And first responders, especially during COVID. Mm-hmm. You know, there mm-hmm. those Andra is that person showing up to try to resuscitate somebody mm. during COVID. When first, mm-hmm. when the first time mm-hmm. have them die in his hands and has to go home to his family. Yeah, you don't just shake that. Yeah, like, yeah. That's, that, that's that's just that's work. I'll leave it at work. I'll go home. That's how you want to introduce O to the show. Yeah, we're jumping right in, baby. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't want to see his little smile because he's talking to you. We got to get right into it. Andra, <laughs> my man. Welcome to the Portaway Podcast. Hey, what's up? Happy to be here. Appreciate it, Sean. Uh, we're just a few days removed from my fight. I know this thing's going to air a little later, but that's okay. Did you watch the fight? Of course I watched the fight. I had to go to work the next morning. I still stayed up and went to work in the morning. That's lovely. Uh, appreciate you for that, man. Appreciate the support. Always. Uh, Always. Did, you, did you happen to see or hear anything about the post-fight press conference? I did. 
I actually watched a lot of post fight stuff. Yeah. I announced my retirement. I, yeah. 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 Now that's I your time. It. I actually it was funny because uh, a lot of people hit me up and uh, were, were wanting to know about the retirement. So yeah. uh, wow. everybody at work wanted to know about it. But uh, well, you got a lot of love out here in Virginia, though. The, the reason why I bring it up is because I think a lot of people, um, this was pretty sudden for the boxing world was very, I think very sudden for the boxing world. Um, but in the same sense, the boxing world has seen me for some years now do commentary, do boxing analytical work on TV. And so they say, well, he's retiring, but we know what he can do. So he'll be good. Or they'll say, well, he's retiring, but he's got that other uh, profession now. So, you know, uh, that's what that's why he's retiring to do that. It's not no, not so much that I'm retiring to do commentary. I'm not retiring. I, I'm retiring because it's time. Mm -hmm. But along mm -hmm. with it being time and with it being sudden to everyone else, the three of us have been in communication for some time. This decision for me to retire did not was not about this movie at all. However, I have a plan. I have multiple plans and I'm and I'm grateful for you two involving me in your plan, your movie. You know what I mean? So I wanted to take this opportunity, this being um motivational Monday. This is the episode that you're on right now, Andra uh uh Boyd uh, being so close to home right now, I said, man, we got to do this before you get out of town. But I wanted to take this time to announce basically to the boxing world, to the world, to the podcasting world, to the Porter Way, any, any listeners that you will not only see Sean Porter doing commentary on TV boxing, you'll also see Sean Porter in the movie, hopefully next year. So, so you two wrote a movie and, um, you just brought it to me, you know, Hey, check a look at what I've done. And I don't know. I just had some ideas, some thoughts and I, I extended them to you and you, you went along with them. And then, um, I don't know, Andre, one thing led to another and I ended up reading, uh, a monologue from the script and, um, you know, you guys really enjoyed the monologue that I did. And uh, we're, we're well, I got stuff to add. Yeah, no, 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 do it. Yeah, Andra, when Andra brought it, and Andra <laughs> didn't know you yet personally, and when I was helping him with this character, and Andra told me what the vision is of this character, and I was putting my own energy into it and, and helping shape him, I was writing him after you. You kept telling me that. And I told Andra that. And then when Andra said to me, his name is Vince, Vince Charles, and Andra kept saying to me, now, over the year now, especially, I feel like Sean is Vince. Vince is Sean. Vince is Sean. Vince is Sean. He always says this. And it made it easy for me to have you and being so close to you mm -hmm. to how to shape it. And his character has such a connection with his character's father. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. yeah. known you and your daddy for very long. So oh, oh you can you can take it from there. Do, do uh give us a synopsis of the movie, Andre. And and, and yeah. even how you got the idea for the movie, all that, you know? So the idea funny enough is um actually came from my mom um she uh she would call me from time to time and, and ask me if i was still writing and i told her no you know i wasn't writing anymore and she used to always remind me that as a kid i wrote a lot and uh, so we actually ended up getting in a bed and she said uh i'll tell you what i want you to write a script and see what what happens with it and don't write it about something you know so you got to go research. So I couldn't do football. Um, so I ended up wanting to do boxing. And uh, so I submitted it to some competitions. And I told her, I said, if it doesn't win, I'm not writing anymore. And uh, so we made the bet. And a couple of weeks later, uh, I won one competition, then another competition, and then another competition. And so from there, I just started, you know, growing the story and, uh, you know, created round one. And, you know, that's basically how round one got created. So um, from there, uh, it basically is about a boxer who is looking for his second chance. And I get excited sometimes, so I'm not trying to give too much away. But uh, <laughs> it's about a boxer, you know, with, with a second chance and having to do uh, what he has to until he can do what he wants to. Um, and, you know, it just kind of follows his, his path of 
coming back. Um, so he's going to have to do some things that aren't necessarily in, in the car, you know, in the cars of what he wants. And uh, hopefully, you know, he gets that happy ending he's looking for. Oh, how many um, scripts would you say you've written over the years? Eight. I've written about eight scripts. And, and I'm working on uh, number nine and number 10 right now. And you've done movies. Yep, working on a movie now, acted in um, a movie, and uh, doing some camera work for another film that's going on next year. Producer, what 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 would you say your your position is within the movies that you've done? Other than other than uh, the movie currently, uh, the movie currently I'm directing. This would be my. <laughs> oh no. And then what will be your position uh, with uh, round one? Will you, will, you're going to be a, the director of round one along with obviously co-writing it? Um, with round one, I may very well bring in, because there's a director I really want to work with and start learning. Um, so if it's possible, um, I'd love Say to bring in. Say his name. Uh, Say his name. Deion Taylor. Deion. <laughs> Deion, uh, Taylor. Deion Taylor. If you if you if you guys haven't checked out Deion Taylor, please please look him up. Um, he's dope. He is, is one of the dopest directors right now, mm. and uh, yeah, would love to work with him. Very good. And then so for for and you we, boy, well, let's say who we who is also who we would hope to. Uh, yeah, well, what do you what what's your position in the movie, boy? I am a co-writer. As well, I'm one of the co-writers, and I have a supporting character role. Yeah. And uh, in addition, the WBC has gotten behind us with this. They're going to yeah. allow us to use their belt. Yeah. And Mauricio Suleiman, president mm -hmm. of WBC, is going to be presenting the belt in the ring. Yeah. And I, Peter Berg is who. <laughs> I, I don't know if we're going to go that far. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's on my list. Because it's veteran, it's boxing centric and veterans and, and mental health centric and veteran centric, and we have partnerships with Stop Soldier Suicide. They're going to market it for free. It's one of the top veteran or it's, they have the top social media platform for all uh, veteran oriented nonprofits in the nation. They engage two to three million people per month, mm -hmm. and they're going to market it for free. And then Twenty Two Kill, we have a verbal agreement with them. Twenty Two Kill, that's the twenty two push ups a day for twenty two veterans that commit suicide a day. And they get 700,000 to 1 million viewers per YouTube uh, post. Mm. They're going to market it for free. And then give an hour, and you're one of their ambassadors. Yep, yep, they have 5,000 yep. mental health professionals that have donated over an hour of time each to help all of America, all of America with mental health uh, challenge experiences. Yeah. And they've given over $28 million worth of time. And the founder was uh, Dr. Barbara Van, Watt, Van Dahlen. She mm -hmm. was named in 2012 top 100 influential people in the world. Mm -hmm. And in president 2019, in, uh, 2019, former president stood up the Prevent Task Force with the mission of ending veteran suicide. It's an inter-cabinet task force with Homeland Secretary of Homeland Security's team and Secretary of Defense's team composing that task force. And I know some of the leadership who are not in those personally through my time being in the military and that mission to end veteran suicide. And he assigned her the founder mm -hmm. of Given Hour mm -hmm. as the head of that task force. Right. And you, my brother, are yeah. their ambassador. Yeah. And we have a written <laughs> agreement with them to market the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a lot tied into this uh, emotionally. Uh, we've got a lot socially. And, the Be Heard campaign. The social Be Heard media campaign, campaign. If you want to give a shout out for um, that. All of that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do the, do, give a shout out to the Be Heard campaign as well. Well, Sean is the, is the face of this Be Heard campaign, and Andre and I spent some time putting this together. Heard stands for hear, encourage, recognize, discuss. It goes in alignment with say it out loud. So it's a social media campaign. We are in the process. Of, we've got a couple of celebrities that have sent us their little testimonials, and the vision is everyone in the U.S. will come out and say, you make this video, hi, my name is so-and-so, and I need to be heard. Mm -hmm. And then you say, I'm a, this is my profession and I'm a daddy or I'm a son or I'm a brother or I'm a sister or I'm whatever. Like, cause everyone can connect. Michael yeah. Jordan is still someone's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you talk about some mental health experience you've had and that experience term, that's very important mm -hmm. because when someone says, how's your health today? My health's good. Just by implying the word health, it doesn't mean something bad. Right. So 
when someone says mental health though, that implies something bad. Always. Because we also attach that word disorder or condition right. or challenge or right. problem. Right. If you use the word experience and mental why experience. Mental health experience. Right. When I smile, I'm having a mental health experience. The way I'm perceiving this world is an experience through here that controls the rest of this. Yeah. So we got Kenny, we haven't released it and launched it yet. And now with, as you're transitioning yes, your, with your purpose yeah. and hopefully we're going to get some more people to send it in, bigger names. We mm -hmm. have the biggest name we have right now is Kenny Anderson from the Nets. Give mm -hmm. us his testimonial. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Itzkowitz is working, sent it to Oscar De La Hoya's people to see if he'll give us one. Mm. I haven't told you that. And we've got some other people. So we're trying and when we launch it, our vision is that this turns into the next big thing. Everyone alive is making their own little testimonial, mm -hmm. sharing something they've gone through yeah. and then why it's important yeah. to be heard yeah. and why it's the cool thing. Yeah. So, and then, so we're going to be shooting a teaser soon. I think we'll end on this note. We're shooting a teaser soon, correct? Yeah. Andre? <laughs> yep, that's correct. <laughs> and what, and, and I, I want everybody to know the purpose of this teaser that we're, that we're going to shoot. What's the purpose of this teaser? So this purpose is to get eyes on it. Um, you know, we've, we've kind of passed the test of people reading the script. People love the script. People love the story. People love, you know, the lead. Uh, so now it's time to, to pass the visual test. So we're going to get star is the, Sean you know, is the star of this. This man. No, Vince is the star of the movie. <laughs> yeah, he's in character. He's in character. He's got love being character. Um, but yeah, this is the visual test. So... Um, yeah, we're going to put out a, an awesome trailer for you, a little teaser. And uh, yeah, get this thing rolling. Perfect. So we got the script. We have um, a number of, of casts, um, like basically in line we just for the, the film. Fun, just the funding. We're, we're looking to get the funding for the film. We're not asking y'all to fund this film. Relax. But we're just letting <laughs> you know that. We, that we're, we're, what I'm letting you know, the Portaway podcast is letting you know that is that Boyd here is a fine gentleman. Andre there is a fine gentleman. They have worked together on a script that is very special, near and dear to their hearts, that is giving to soldier suicide, to mental health experiences. Experiences. To and 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 the name of the movie is Round One, and uh, our Be Heard campaign as well. Is um is everything that we're going for. We just want y'all to be looking out for it. We want you to support it, of course. And of course, if this reaches anyone who's got a lot of money, I mean, you got to be, you know, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And listen, nah, 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 nah. the return on investment, a movie about a bo a fighting movie about a boxer yeah. dedicated to mental health and veteran suicide. Yeah. And we got these entities that are leading. You heard what I said with the numbers, two, yeah. three million every month. <laughs> right. and they're going to be marketing it for free because of the cause. Yeah. The return so, on investment. But but honestly though, but at the end of the day, this movie is right in line with Motivational Monday. Mm -hmm. This is not just a movie that's going to entertain you. We we want to give a uh, life lesson, life experience through this movie, and we want to be able to use the money generated from the movie to help soldier suicides. Mm -hmm. Twenty two soldiers a twenty two veterans. Excuse a me, day. a day are taking their lives through through because of PTSD, because of mental health breakdowns. No one's there to hear them. Because no one's there to hear them and they need to be heard, H-E-R-D. Thank you very much. Yeah. And round one is the movie and take life one punch at a time. And round one's a track yep. on, on raindrops. Yep. Round one is the track we put to, that Andra put together for the video on you. That we're going to share and we'll see what happens when we share it. There you go. And the idea with round one, or when I talked about it in round one, you haven't been hit yet. You haven't been hurt yet. Mm -hmm. Think clearly. Mm -hmm. When it's round one, it's fresh. Mm -hmm. Anything's possible. Mm -hmm. And you're present. Mm -hmm. You're not lost in what could happen or had happened. Mm -hmm. You're now. Mm -hmm. You're now. Mm hmm Tell them that. Don't talk. Don't you preaching it to me. What's like you need? I do. I do. Uh, appreciate you guys for joining Motivational Monday. Appreciate you, Andre, for tur for turning on, man, and 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 linking in with us, yeah, yeah. getting that Wi-Fi going so that we can keep you in here a little while longer. <laughs> and uh, I'll be seeing you soon, Absolutely. my man. 
And yeah. uh, hopefully yeah, we'll have you back on here it. as well uh, um, with some more uh, motivational messages to, to send to everyone. God Absolutely. bless you, big dog. Can't wait. Love you, brother. All right, All right you too. Now. Boy, All right, see ya. Thank you. For appreciate this. you, man. I'm so thankful for this. And yeah. I love you. And uh, we're, we're so honored. My school is West Point. My family. Everybody that gets to touch you, you got a whole, my whole West Point class, 2003, were messaging before your fight. Oh, wow. Protectors of the free are behind him. Yeah. Everyone's been reaching out to me during that fight and just speaking only, nothing about the fight, only about the character you have. Yeah. Your character, your character. Yeah. And it makes me so happy that everyone gets to see and understands what I've been saying all this time about you. And, you know, watching, I can only pray i don't have any children yet but if i could ever have a son that has that holds me in the space that you hold your father mm -hmm. has that discipline that you have the mm -hmm. restraint mm -hmm. the character the understanding the mm -hmm. respect mm -hmm. that when the greatest of emotions can be overwhelming you you're able to slow time down because of how that bond has shaped mm -hmm. your interaction with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, I, if I have a son that could love me that way mm -hmm. with everything you are, I was thinking that today, Yeah, I'll be the, the greatest daddy alive and the most fulfilled father. I'm blessed to hear you say that. Thank you. I mean it. Yeah. I'll leave you guys with this because he, he mentioned my character. This is one of my favorite sayings and we'll probably touch on this again. You'll definitely hear me say this over the course of my lifetime, as long as you guys are watching me speak, personality gets you in the door. Character keeps you in the room. God bless you guys. Have a good day. What's up? I'm Showtime Sean Porter. I'm Ant. Follow me on IG. Ant with two T's. This is the Port Away Podcast. This is Anthony Brunal, and this is Carson A. Merck. Tell them what to do. Hey, like, subscribe, comment, follow, follow us on all social media platforms. <laughs> say subscribe. I'm from Louisiana. I'll talk with a B. Let's do All it. Right, Let's do it again. Let's All do it. Right. Just introduce yourself. Okay. And then tell them, and then you tell them what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. Support the podcast. Already. You're already here. Hey, <laughs> hey, this is our outro. We're gonna do it how we want to. I'm Showtime Sean Porter. I'm Anthony Brenner. Carson A. Merck. Like, subscribe, comment. This is the Porter Way. <laughs>